space of two hours, he would have called like six, seven times. Um, when are you closing? Um, I want to come and pick you up. At points in time, he would say that I'm already packed here, so hurry up and let's go and all that. And then the rest would go like, hey, this is your partner. He loves you. He does this. And I would just smile through it. I tried. I'm like, <coughs> I mean, this thing is a bit too clingy for me, you know, so you may have to have conversations around it and really know about it. But everybody goes like, oh, no, these days you can't trust the men. So if you have a man who really cares about you like this and they want to be in your space, da, 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 you have to allow it and all that. Okay, you don't want to pry too much. And then, um, so the meetings that you usually have for two to three hours, um, she pop in very late, sometimes 30 minutes, just so she will still be long. And then, um, fiance or boyfriend is here to pick her already. And then, you know, she goes, um, gradually they got married and then she stopped coming for the meetings. So I reached out and she says, Adam, I don't know whether you're right or wrong but a lot has happened within that short space and it was also difficult for her to open up because there was this fear inside of her and i said okay it's just you and i talking so we planned to meet even the meeting she was she was so afraid that hmm, she had to make us meet in a church you know a church environment and we sat somewhere but I mean, it's a very big space so there's a restaurant and we sat there to talk and then she began to open up on a lot of things about how she doesn't think she has a mind of her own anymore the biggest part for me was when she had a promotion coming and the, the man was able to impress upon her not to take the promotion why because you know when you have you get promoted on your job. You have to spend a bit more time on the job. You won't have to spend time with me and all of those things. So let it go. What you're doing is okay. You don't need all those things and all those people. It's me you need. Do you not appreciate me? Every time she tries to have a mind of her own, he comes in to say, you don't appreciate me. You don't trust me. You don't love me. You don't appreciate all the love, all the things I am doing for you. Gradually cut off parents. All you need is me. I love you. Um, he makes you go out when he wants. And he has tried to paint the love picture such that, such that it's him and nobody else. Now she feels like I am choking because I can't even talk to him about how I truly feel that I have lost almost everything. Um, she says even food that they have to eat in the house. She comes in in a he comes in a very nice way to say that oh this week I think Monday we should have this we should what do you think oh I think oh come on you know I mean yeah what I'm suggesting so you don't have you don't have you know any mind of your own and a lot so we had this conversation and um, I I and then I also noticed that every once in a while she posts stuff okay on her status on her. And then I, 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 I screenshot a couple of them. And it was one of the things that got me really interested in having that conversation with her to find out, okay, all these things you've been putting up, what really is this about? Uh, most people will love you for who you are, which is not something that can quickly change. Narcissists will love you for what you do and how you make them feel. This is why a narcissist love can disappear at any moment. The first time you don't do what they want or the first time you offend their ego, any love they had for you is gone. She'll post this. Another one she posted, a narcissist will sometimes purposely treat you so poorly with such complete disrespect that they give you no choice but to leave. Soon after that, they are seen flaunting their new supply. They purposely set it up the way um, so they can say it was not their fault. You are the one who left them. Narcissists will ruin every holiday or special location. If it's not about them, they will make it about them by creating some kind of drama or chaos. So he, she goes on emotions for a narcissist equates, um, to fuel. They want to hear you getting irritated. They want to get you annoyed. They want your voice to, to rise and see the tears of frustration, um, 
in your eyes when they see this it makes them feel so powerful so she posts these things quite a lot and she tells me that these are the ways she expresses how she feels because this is how she feels and she feels she's just losing herself but can't even have that conversation with her partner because he will end up turning it all against her. You don't appreciate me. Look at all the things I do for you. And I love you. You don't need all those people. It's me you need. I spend time with you. I do this. And, you know, so for you to have your peace of mind, you just smile through it and go away. But deep within, you know that your brains don't belong to you. So Daniela and I had a quick conversation around this and said, okay, so this was set a contest, but you want to have this whole conversation about you know who a narcissistic partner is how how do you even identify this person ahead of you know getting into a serious relationship how re how really do they make you feel and how can they affect your well-being which is very important are they bad people to live with or how do you navigate yourself around a person who exhibits such, you know, strong controls, you know, over you? And uh, because I want to believe that people find themselves here and sometimes all they do is lock themselves up and cry because or really you can't, he hasn't beaten you or she hasn't beaten you. But these are things you're feeling deep within and you're unable to have conversations around them. So this platform is just for us to, you know, have these conversations and be able to educate people around some of these things. Are they dangerous people to live with? How dangerous can they get, you know, and um, who to do this conversation? I have um, Adolf Ewuku Bekui. He is a clinical psychologist. Hi, Adolf. Hi, Adam. Good morning. Good morning and good morning to you. Great. Listeners. And and one of the reasons I appreciate having some of these conversations with adults is the fact that he has a very big heart for women. <laughs> and he believes in fairness. If it's not good, it's not good. If you have to run, he tells you to run. If you have to work through it, he tells you to work through it. So very, very, very real and practical lessons we will be having. Hey, Phoebe, haven't I missed you? <laughs> hey, you have left us to go and stay in Obi Manso. How are you? I'm very well. Thank You're you. looking very, very, very great. Thank you so much. Obi Manso is collecting you. <laughs> great. Phoebe Besameta is a family counselor, also very real when it comes to these things. So, I am in very, 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 very good company. And please join us to have this conversation. I start with you, Adolf. Who is that person? You were asking me, now I'm asking you. <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interesting. Um, thank you very much, Adam. But I think the, the story you told us mm. aptly described who this a person is. is. A narcissist turns the relationship into a theater and he uh -huh. or she is on the stage and Drama. the spotlight must constantly be on oh him jesus or her. christ exactly he turns the relationship he or she turns the relationship into a theater and they are constantly on the spotlight hmm. whatever it takes for them to be under the spotlight they do they could be very manipulative but they do it and they do it so so well mm -hmm. that you don't even see it coming. Like initially, this friend of yours interpreting this as love. You know, love. You are constantly being gnawed at. And it is deliberate mm. on his part. Nothing comes between the person who is a narcissist and the desire to occupy the center stage to be all over the place uh, they need to be admired they have a strong sense of admiration for admiration a sense mm -hmm. of entitlement that hits the moon so it is very difficult simply put it's very difficult uh, living with a narcissist 
And so no matter how well you try to adjust, you keep on adjusting, you keep on adjusting because the person is living their normal life to them. For them, that is it. That is who they are. That, that is the personality trait they have. And oftentimes, they do not suffer the stains of what they are dishing out to you. Yeah. It is you, the people that they live with. When you have a personality oh. trait that is so inflexible, creates the problem. Eventually, they are not happy. They right? themselves. They themselves are not happy because w there is a deep sense of insecurity that they are covering up. And so just being in your face and making sure nobody gets close into the into the certain perimeter that they feel comfortable, mm -hmm. radio that they feel comfortable. It's all a way of just guarding off people, warding off people, so that they don't get into you know they are vulnerable, but they cover that vulnerability. Okay. So if you ask me how do you live with this person? My answer is straightforward. You can be responsible for how this person behaves. You can't. You can't. You can't be responsible for that. It is not your responsibility. That is interesting because then why am I in this relationship? Okay, that would be frustrating to the bone. Well, frustration isn't always bad. It begins a certain process mm. of self-discovery and um, healing. Okay. Before we get into it, let me take Phoebe's initial thoughts on who this person is. <laughs> well, thank you, Adam. Um, I mean, much as uh, Doc was saying, someone who has a narcissistic um, behavioral pattern is someone who has an inflated sense of self um self-worth oh, yeah, so and the irony like doc was saying is that usually they're covering up a very fragile self-esteem they're very vulnerable um they feel very insecure and it's most likely that they grew up in a family or in an environment where those feelings or that feeling of self um aggrandizement was first portrayed so this is where um, you find out the parents of somebody who is narcissistic kept making them feel important but never really created a connection with them that familial connection with them so the child was always important as long as they were performing they were excelling and so that's where they learned those behaviors of I use people to make me feel good because that's where they learned it from, from the home setting. And so when they get into a relationship, you are there to make me feel good. You are there to um, comfort me when I'm feeling hurt. And so um, you realize that with narcissistic partners, when you criticize them, they react in a very volatile manner. They can't stand criticism. They get very hurt. And sometimes they put up certain acts of aggression that can be very scary. And so mm. being with a narcissistic person can be very challenging, extremely challenging, especially when they haven't come to terms with the fact that these are the behaviors they're putting up. Because as like Doc was saying, as long as, as far as they can see, this is normal. This is how you relate to people. And also a narcissistic person cannot really love someone else because they see that person as an extension of themselves. They are there to serve my intentions. So they don't see you as a separate human being that has needs, that needs comfort, that needs support, um, that needs love. They see you as someone that has just been created or is in their life to make them feel good and to also um, cover up their weaknesses and avoid criticizing them, just always keep them on some sort of emotional high that is actually not real. <laughs> this is scary. <laughs> this is very scary. So, um, from I want to, you know, go down to this. Are these people born with, with these traits? Or they learn them? Phoebe, you said they learn them. 
They learn them. Doc, you agree that it's learned behavior. It is learned behavior. Um, but of course, uh, behaviors are human beings. I think the one fundamental thing we have to establish is that we are very complex. Mm. Okay, mm. so a chunk comes from the um, family relation, family context, but also it is something that there may be some underlying uh, biological stuff coming up. So okay. it is environment person interaction that chain out these people. Particularly in the attachment, you know, when you mm. come at it from attachment uh, perspective, every child, every human being is born with the need for proximity, mm -hmm. for closeness. It is okay. And depending on how parents, significant others respond to this natural inclination for proximity, mm. it will shape who you turn out to be. Mm. So in yeah. the formation of attachment, you have different types of attachment. There is a secure one where yeah. the child is signaling what the needs are and parents are so perceptive that they get it and respond. And that secure base that a child gets helps the child later in life. Right. You know, because it affirms the child, it validates the child and protects the child. And what are we looking for in this world? A sense of validation and a sense of protection that I'm safe, I'm secure. The secure mm. child gets that. Then mm. you come to the, the avoidant, the disorganized. It is not mm. okay that mm -hmm. in this relationship you have a parent who is more on the demanding side and less on the responsive mm -hmm. side. So it is about cracking the whip all the time and emotionally disconnecting. Mm. Mm. They themselves need carers, you know mm. what I mean. Mm. And so the child is left with this no sense of appreciation. Mm. Okay? And yet, there is this high expectation of this child. Oh dear. And whatever happens sets us up for who we become in future. So this person is already damaged psychically, psychologically. From childhood. From childhood. Yeah. It isn't, I wouldn't want to create a very uh, hopeless situation that it is irredeemable. Well, but, but like it's so important as this area Phoebe, you have gone Phoebe into. indicated, the m you have to really recognize that this is the hurt I'm causing people I say I love. You know, it's, it's just said and done. And uh, I can say I love you, I love you. But what is it, really? It is in the doing, mm -hmm. the manifestation of that love, okay? Yeah. And they are very smart, they are very intelligent, they are very cunning, because they have used that. Of course, you have to be smart to be cunning. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, so, they are all over you. You can't mm. breathe, literally. I actually love, before we go on, I love the bit about, you know, the, the formative stage and how these things sometimes come about. Mm -hmm. um, for the past four or five weeks, we dedicated the whole month to talking about teenagers, children, their growth, their needs and all that. And I'm just happy that this is coming up slightly in as much as that's not the focus, mm -hmm. you know, because then these behaviors, they have backgrounds. So yeah. your environment, um, how you're brought up and know your background, all of it um, is cumulative, you know, to these behaviors we see. Absolutely. And even in ad currently, it is even an epidemic. Oh dear. In the oh. sense that we live in a world now where we can curate our identity. Mm -hmm. It is all about mm -hmm. the likes, self absorption, mm -hmm. being at the center stage on social media everywhere. It is me. It is the best of me, how many likes I have. It is not about the other person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the bigger environment creates such a very fertile ground for people to cultivate. When I excel, I get all the applause. There is no cooperation, no. And that is what feeds the narcissistic tendencies in people. By the way, you know, a little bit of it gets you going, 
Mm-hmm. So there is a continuum. We don't have to really, <laughs> uh, you know, consign all of that into the way it's been. Yeah. Okay. If you don't believe in yourself, how do you achieve anything? True. So it is a belief in self that has gone, excuse my language, bonkers. Wow. Wow. All right. Great. So, I mean, um, if we're going back a little bit again, that it means that if you're a parent and you're beginning to have children, it's important that you pay attention to these things. Because the way you bring your child up could just be fueling this adult we'll, we will be having tomorrow. So we have a part to play. I mean, I think we may have to make time to talk about this in the context of children. But today mm-hmm. we're focusing mm-hmm. on, on the partners. The person is already grown <laughs> and has become somebody's partner and is tormenting them. Uh, is this more prevalent in, in, in men than in women? Phoebe? It is. I mean, up to 75% of men are diagnosed with the narcissistic personality disorder as compared to women. So so we find out that it's more prevalent in men than in women. Great. And more so, you see, women are more relational. Mm -hmm. And it is lack of the ability to be relational. You know, Mm. relatedness Mm. is compromised. Mm. Okay. And so, yes, if the prevalence for women is very uh, low, low. It, it is understandable. understandable. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it is understandable in that respect. Great. So, we will move on. We've been able to uncover who this person is. But some way, somehow, right? Yeah. Because of how smooth they are, you know, how, for yeah. instance, they will present love to you, how smart and how cunning they are, like you have described. A lot of, I mean, right from the beginning, you see this person as, oh, wow, <laughs> this is a great guy that you end up falling in love with. Because um, you're imagining, I mean, somebody who would call you very often, you know, be in your face. I mean, the, the beginning of a relationship, you're always expecting some of these things. Now, how... Or at what point do you begin to know that this is not normal? You know, how clingy they are, um, how possessive they become, how obsessed they become with you. And especially so when it's in the beginning of the relationship, like this friend, I kind of thought that, okay, this was a bit too much. You're not a baby. And you've taken care of yourself. You're on your own and everything. You've met this person, a meeting that we've been having for God knows how long. All of a mm-hmm. sudden, in two hours, you'd have gotten six, seven phone calls checking on you. How's it going? Are you okay? Should I come and pick you? Is everything okay? Don't you want to leave now? I mean, aren't you missing me? Don't you want to be with me? And all that. At what point do you begin to discover that, okay, this is a bit too far for love and care, Phoebe? You know, it's very interesting what you're asking because it depends on a number of factors and it actually depends on you, the person, Mm -hmm. because the way you're describing it, you could pick up the signs that something was wrong, but your friend couldn't. She was in love. And the reason why, sorry? She was in love. Uh Aha. But you see, the thing is, how do you define love? Most narcissistic personality uh, persons you realize that they end up in relationships with a codependent person. So that is a person that actually needs that level of attention, that needs, that craves that constant um, focus, that constant interaction with me. And so if you're that kind of person, the, the sad thing is you may not pick up on the signs that this is a maladaptive form of Mm. connection or, you know, attachment. You won't pick it up on it very early because if you yourself you've been starved of attention um you've been yearning for an intimate connection with somebody else with a partner you won't pick up the signs you're like you're saying you're taking it as oh he loves me he cares for me i'm the center of his world but Mm -hmm. if like you um you're already very secure in yourself you have a a, you know a perfect sense of self-confidence when you start seeing these um, behaviors, then you start to suspect that no. First and foremost, when we are having conversations, it's mostly about him. He's not really interested in what I have to do. 
he's always trying to take up my space always wants mm -hmm. to um what's it called cut m my interactions with other people short mm -hmm. it's a, it's amazing but we're supposed to do this but he found him a way to manipulate the situation so that we ended up doing what he wanted um when i suggest things to do with my family he doesn't really want to do it. It is more with his side of the family or with his friends. Um, he doesn't really, you know, take an interest in the things, in my goals and the things I want to do in my life. Um, whenever I talk about work or whatever, it all, the conversation always turns to him. When you pick up on these things, then you're like, oh, no, something is going wrong. But it depends on who you are as a woman as well, how secure you are in yourself. So that when you realize that the focus is always on this other person, then something is wrong. Or when he's feeling emotionally um, hungry or emotionally, you know, fragile, you have to keep, you know, um, encouraging him. You have to keep, um, what's it called? I, I, always encouraging him, always uplifting him. When you realize these things keep happening, and by the time you leave that uh, conversation, you feel drained. Then you're like, no, something is actually going very wrong in my life. And I don't think this relationship is healthy. But it depends on you, who you are as a woman as well. And unfortunately, it took your friend so much time. She actually got married before she realized that something is wrong. wrong. And so when you're dealing with a narcissistic relationship, you have to look at both parties. Because the one who is on the receiving end also has to ask themselves, what is it about me that led me into that relationship that thought this was healthy apart from the narcissistic uh, person you have to look at the partner and why they welcome this kind of interaction with that person great you know when you talked about the fact that there are times that you know they they don't they're not even interested in your goals and reading around them also i also learned you know that they they could appear as very much interested in the things you're doing only to steer you away from it yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. only yeah. to steer you away from it you know yeah. um you want to do a b c d okay i think it's great however why not consider it this way consider it this way before you realize they've gotten into your head and yeah. you're still doing what they are imagining for you and not what you're imagining yeah. for yourself you know adolf yeah. um you want to add a bit to that on at what point in time do you begin to realize that okay this is becoming too much for comfort too much for you know love in, in chi you realize that oh, how you? <laughs> like, yes, yes. you feel so skin tight <laughs> i think that's the tilt the tilt uh the the signs are clearly they come very early but you see there is something we want mm. and what we want will not will blind us to really t pay attention to the yeah. nuances the little little things yeah this friend of yours really we must also put it in the context of the group relation yeah everybody was mm. married no not everybody was married right no okay so um she was looking for love oh yes indeed she found one yes okay mm -hmm. close i have found the person Sin. i'm looking for but you see once you begin to realize that this person is turning out to be another parent of yours mm. monitoring your mood mm. you don't misconstrue that as love it is not there is possessiveness in there there is jealousy in there and fundamentally the person has colonized your mind oh jesus <laughs> But <laughs> the person has colonized your mind <laughs> playing mind games with you uh gaslighting here and there mm. to the extent that you just live for him true you live for him yeah you have no life of your own you will not be happy and again you are also afraid so I think that it is there from the very beginning of relationship. 
if it, it is there. But yeah, Adolf, yeah. I would say that sometimes it's it's challenging for women to see that, especially like you rightly said, if they are in a, a community of women where it seems okay, everybody is in a relationship, and then you also our cultural background you know by a certain age you're supposed to be getting married exactly and you have this man and he wants to marry you and he's paying attention to you he's not flirting with somebody else all his focus is on you it's something it takes them a while to pick up on it <laughs> you it may never pick up you may never pick up you may never yeah, pick up i understand okay yeah. so you get in there and the, for the for the rest of your life you're imprisoned. <laughs> no, just uh, you feel trapped. You feel trapped. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can't do more of what you are doing to get out. No. So it's no. like well, you are on a treadmill, going nowhere. Yeah. Yet threatened. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, you are not strengthening your muscles. You are not losing calories. <laughs> you are not losing calories. <laughs> <laughs> you are not burning calories. Oh dear. <laughs> you see, it's very sad. Mm. Yeah. It's very sad. You you talked about your well being. How does all of this affect your well being? Exactly. Yeah. It fundamentally undermines your well being. Yeah. Because I mean the greatest disability on earth I see is for someone to take over your mind. It is the greatest disability. Mm. You have been given birth to, you have been educated by your parents, you have educated yourself, you have built your mind. And somebody from nowhere mm -hmm. says, yeah. I have taken over. You don't live for yourself alone. A again, you don't live for yourself again. So who are you? You have no mm -hmm. identity anymore. Mm -hmm. You dress to the person's preference, mm -hmm. you eat to the person's preference. In fact, you breathe the carbon dioxide <laughs> out of your cell because oh. the person is always around you. And it takes so much to break from that cycle and viciousness. It takes a journey. It is not a day, it's a journey. Just yeah. La uh, yeah, this week I had a call from a client I have worked with for years. I mean, s for I, you know, about I think ten years ago. Yes, we got in touch, and clearly, I could see that this spouse she, she was in with, I mean, a die in the womb narcissist. Mm. But at the time, she couldn't get it. She didn't have the courage. So she called me and was giving back the words that we spoke about that really midwived her from the from the belly of the narcissist. Okay, it has taken her almost ten years to get out. Now she's saying, "Me, relationship, no way. <laughs> I'm not getting in again." So it is a journey. You need support. You need mm. to be to be believed, because especially where the person is not hitting you, the person, mm. but you get so yeah. emotionally exhausted. Yeah. Mm. You, mm. you know, you have completely bent out. Yeah, you don't have you're, a life. You're choking. <laughs> you're going had... through daily motions because yeah. you have to get up. You have to go to work, you have to do this, you have to do that. You have lost yourself completely. In fact, you are dead emotionally. So there are many people who are dead, but we talk to them all the time. And they are even afraid to talk about yes. it. Yes, I they are afraid because the hostility that you, you will be met with <laughs> if ever it gets and out there. <laughs> yes, that hostility is to cower you into submission. Yes. So but I think also because it's misinterpreted. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I keep saying that um, because of where we're from and because 
a lot of women do lack that level of attention in their relationships. Um, out of imagining you're sitting with your friends and you say, he keeps calling me. He's always at my work. He's always buying me lunch. He doesn't let me go for lunch with other people. Um, he's always there first thing in the morning. We have started going to his church. A lot of people say, hey, yeah, lucky you. He's interested. He's really pepe, interested pepe. in you. He seems to be taking you seriously. Not a lot of people will pick it up as, you know, this man is taking over your life and doesn't want you to have an identity of your own. Yeah, Phoebe. So I think it's also the people around you, the community mm -hmm. around you, the support. If they don't also recognize this as a toxic relationship, they are not going to encourage you to get out of it. They are going to say it's a blessing. You are right. But in the particular context that you told us, yeah. you had a hunch. Uh, yes, 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 uh, yes, yes. You had uh, a hunch. Yes. Uh. But you remember, and you said your other friend said, oh, he really cares about you. Oh, yes. A lot, yes. Of, a lot of people felt that, wow, in this day and age that men don't have time for women, you have a man who is, you know, paying so much attention to you. Oh, wow, he's calling again and things like that. I <laughs> feel like, you know, exactly. um, he, 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 you, you are his world, you know. Exactly. But I, I, I knew that it was just a matter of time and you were going to begin to choke. Exactly. You know. Yes. Exactly. So good, you're having conversations. Yeah. Good, yeah. she's talking to you. But you just imagine if this conversation had been earlier, when yeah. you had your hunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So, two more things, right? Mm -hmm. No, not two more things. A lot of things. <laughs> so I had a hunch. Had come. I mentioned it. You mm -hmm. know, because you also know that. The person is just getting into a relationship and they're excited about it. And so you ought to be careful not to be the one ruining their relationship. Otherwise, you're a devil. But then I will drop hints and go like, so let's say that mm -hmm. I mentioned it. And she felt like, hmm, Adam, you're saying something. How do you begin to deal with it? At what well, stage? Yeah. The relationship. Well, the marriage, which one? The relationship. So at the time I said that, I, I felt like, I, I think this person is, is being a bit too possessive, you know? You're an adult. Um, she was like, what, 34 at the time? And I'm happy you found a relationship. But this, like, two hours, six, seven calls. Should I come and pick you? Are you okay? Aren't you getting bored? Um, are you not missing me? And it was, you know, regular. So I'm saying that when I mentioned it after a few of the meetings and she realized that, yeah, there was, I was saying something and she decided to pay attention, a little bit of attention to what I was telling her. Where mm. were we going to begin from? Because her heart was also gone. Her heart was there and she's also realizing that this thing is becoming manipulative. At that stage, is it something you can work around? No. Hey. <laughs> no. You can't. You can't. You can't be in a relationship with such a person. If that's the question you're asking. Yes. There's nothing you. It can't. You can't work on it. There's no that talking is... to him about what you're no. seeing and how you're feeling. No. No. It, and especially if you go and you can't even use the term narcissist with a narcissistic person. Because most of them usually react violently when you say that. They don't like it at all. They cannot imagine that what you're saying is true because obviously it's a negative term. So honestly, you can't work with... If he, he actually doesn't come to terms with what he's doing and work on it, no, the relationship can't work. And you can be his therapist. Hey. That's my so what, Phoebe, at the beginning of the relationship, once you realize these things, you flee? You flee. That is my submission. I've seen this at the Approved. latter stages. Approved. Approved. Hey, you people. <laughs> the relationship, no. And, and, and it devolved into an abusive relationship. Eventually, yeah. They are married and he's imagining all sorts of things. He wants his wife there round the clock. It's, it's scary. He said, you said you were going to let's say it's Tema, but I saw you taking the road to Adabraka. Yeah. Why are you following? 
I think you're going to see somebody else who like I mean insane levels of, of jealousy and you have not, it's scary it's scary to the point where it devolved into um, a physical attack and this is a married couple you can't help them they need to get help you can't help them I've seen the genesis of it recently there's a relationship the girl still can't wrap her mind around the fact that you know this is what the issue is but the gentleman has started abusing her. She didn't want anybody to know. It you, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Oh, but that is really very sad for me in the sense that... I mean, Let me lighten I... your mood a little bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me lighten your mood a little bit. It's the serious issues that we're talking about. You yeah. see, when the red flags become clear to you, mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. to make a choice. Mm. And you can have a conversation knowing very well that whichever way it goes, you're not going to compromise on certain key values that you hold. I think that if you see, mm. you would want to inform yourself first. So yeah. if, mm. you know, for instance, you could have passed on some literature to, uh, to read. Yeah. You could recommend, you go and see, talk to, a professional because you don't have the ability yeah, to go this. into yeah. all the order. details yes and um, what you're doing is to building her capacity empowering her in the process of decision making so eventually even if she decides amidst all against all the odds to go into the relationship she has certain tools to work with to work with mm. Mm. because the point is but the case is the gentleman will never will not change so how will she make it work it oh, is there will not and will never change that i am not happy about that is my sadness but i don't finish i'll come <laughs> to you phoebe to address <laughs> you know, my sadness so in order not to be a blame tomorrow that <laughs> i wasn't yeah. interested and you know i would have been okay if Asimesi hadn't poked his or her nose. <laughs> okay, you go yeah. through this route, building her strength gradually, and mm -hmm. emphasizing the fact that until you tie the knot, at even after tying the knot, the very same day you can just say, "I'm done. I won't marry again." <laughs> Life is important, though. It is. It is extremely important, and so. There shouldn't be any point of no return in the journey of life, particularly in the context of uh, relationship. There shouldn't be that. Because that turn um, partners into, they, they become fatalistic in the orientation that mm -hmm. once I am in there, I have to endure every indignity that is thrown at me. You are a child of God. You don't deserve indignity, especially when it is decision from other people. On your life. On your life. No, that is not what God wants you to. No, that other people should As run As for that life. one, I don't agree to it. <laughs> Why should somebody um, be making decisions <laughs> on your life like as an adult? <laughs> Inf you know? you see, infantilizing you. Yes. That's that the word. It, it, is, it is painful. <laughs> Mm. It is dehumanizing. Mm. We must call it what it is. Mm. Okay, it is. And I think that you deserve to live well. Adolf, but to my sadness, okay. Are we saying that there is no way out for this person? Whom, for instance, right? Um, it was no fault of his that he grew up like this. We went into the background a bit and looked at how some of these behaviors come up. They learn yeah, it. Yeah, um, you yeah. know, it could be somehow a bit of, you know, genetical and all that. But it really isn't any fault yeah. of theirs that they are yeah. like this. Why yeah. can't they be loved? Why can't they be helped? Why are we saying that they can't change? Why should they be left alone? And I want to believe that. It is this feeling inside of them also that I can't be loved. 
I can't be truly accepted for who I am. And so I will go out there and pray. Could that not be true also? I'm seeking praise through praying. <laughs> because they have I love it. To, it is so you don't even and have I what it takes. They have also extremely maybe they have, they have what is called ill that it to the other person years ago. But you know, listen, I like the sound of that. The palate that is goodness that helps your child. God goes beyond figures and splendor. 80 double shop or serious music is challenges like CBG Bank and NTU 0302. Now, I have a message here, Father. The fight a man to settle for loving me so friend, and not truly love and of course and um relationship and you just a very good buy from is it we realize that jealous you know very um it has to be a blame you to take um somebody will do asking if this at that point admit that they have a challenge stand where you are learned about the power control mm. it's just all bad there are things you know, but good food brings to the stew and beef and stew, which just is the stew. Oh, Fabia, did you brush your? Mm -mm. Why are you laughing at your sister?